Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Lahari Telang here and the lecture today is on computed tomography. The learning out outcomes would be to list component parts of the CT machine, to explain scanning procedure for CBCT, to describe the application of uh, CT in dentistry and also to list indications and contraindications of CBCT. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the history of CT, which is also called as computed tomography. The term computer-assisted tomography was a revolutionary imaging technique that used image reconstruction mathematics to produce cross-sectional images of the head. Computer tomography is considered to be among the top five innovations in medicine because of which the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine was given away in 1979 to uh, Godfrey Hounsfield and Alan Cormack for the development of computer-assisted uh, tomography. The pictures that you can see here are that on your left side are the first generation CT scanners. And then you can see for yourself how much they have evolved over the years. And now currently we use multi-detector CT, which is also referred to as multi-slice CT, uh, which was actually introduced in the late 1990s. And now is the most widely used CT scanner design. So the advantages now of uh, the multi-detector CT scanners is it reduces the scan time uh, which essentially reduces the time the patient is lying down and getting exposed to radiation and which also limits motion artifacts simply from the patient breathing or any slight movement or even if you're taking a CT scan for a patient who cannot lay still for long for example a child also, there is market improvement in the spatial resolution or um, to the submillimeter dimensions. So, in, in a sense, what we are talking about is that there is a lot more clarity in the image that you see these days in comparison to when they were first developed uh, in the 1970s. So, how does the CT machine actually work? If you look at this picture here, you have the patient lying down on a table surface, which is called as the gantry, um, onto which and the patient enters into the x-ray source and essentially the entire component is called as a gantry. So you have a fan-shaped x-ray beam which rotates around the patient and you also have a detector or a sensor which also rotates around the patient and multiple exposures are made. So the basic principle of CT is the same, whether you're applied to conventional single size CT or multi-detector CT or even cone beam computed tomography, which I will be covering in the next lecture, um, which is very useful in the maxillofacial region. So in all CT machines, you do use x-rays and the beam is generally a collimated x-ray source and you also have a detector which revolves around the patient to capture the image um, because of the x-rays which expose the part of the body, the image has to be captured and that image gets captured on the detector. So when we're talking about x-rays, it's important to talk about the x-ray tubes and detectors, especially let's talk about multi-detector CT scanners. These operate at very high tube voltages, generally about 120 kilovolt peak, but they could range between 80 to 140 and have high tube currents, uh, 200 to 800 milliamperes range. And thus they require special x-ray tubes to meet the high demands on the heat production as well as cooling system. The MDCT uses X-ray tubes with rotating anodes with a high heat capacity up to 8 million heat units. Whereas if you were to compare the dental unit, it only um, is around 20,000 heat units. The high X-ray output minimizes exposure time and improves image quality by increasing the signal to noise ratio. In MDCT, the X-ray beam exiting the patient is captured by an array of solid state detectors 
which are usually made of high atomic numbers insulating materials like gadolinium. It's important for us now to talk about what field of view is. After the x-ray is taken, the image is formed. The field of view is essentially the area or anatomical area or E region being imaged. For maxillofacial and mandibular CT protocols, the general uh, field of view ranges from 7 to 18 centimeters area, uh, basically to encompass the entire maxillofacial skeleton from the cranial base uh, to the mandibular inferior border and beyond. So how is the CT image formed? Like we just discussed, you have the x-ray source and you have detectors. So the detectors, they record the um, photon attenuation by measuring the number of photons that exit the patient and registering this information at several hundred angles throughout the rotational arc. So as you realized in the previous image, that the x-ray source and the detector are both rotating around the patient. So there are multiple exposures made from different angles and all of these are captured by the detector. And then they're put together using a complex mathematical algorithm and translating this uh, data into a three-dimensional map. And essentially the map is what constitutes the image that we see. So it's important to understand what a voxel and a pixel is here. A pixel is a picture element and a voxel is a volume element. So CT images are recorded and displayed as a matrix of individual blocks, which I just told you are called voxels. And you also learn, need to understand what a Hounsfield unit is. It was a scale, uh, the Hounsfield scale that was created or named after Sir Godfrey Hounsfield. It's a quantitative scale for describing radio density and it's frequently used in CT scans um, where its value is also termed as a CT number. So if you look at this chart here, you can compare the type of tissue to the Hounsfield units. So I want you to pay attention that water actually is zero and essentially all human beings are made up of um, uh, 80 to 90 percent of water. So if you've noticed here, just above that, plus 15 is CSF, blood is 15 to 30 Hounsfield units, clotted blood is slightly over that, 50 to 75, muzzle is 40 to 80, and bone is 200 to 3000, depending on the density of the bone. On the other hand, fat is minus 60 to minus 100 Hounsfield units, Lung is minus 20, 200 to minus 600, and air is minus 1000. So that is how Hounsfield units are um, valued. So there's another important term that you may want to remember when we're talking about CT images. It's called as windowing. So here in this image, you can see a bone window and a, a soft tissue window. So it happens when you change contrast, when you're viewing the images. So CT images are typically 12-bit images, which means that they have 4096 shades of gray, uh, which is essentially um, 2 to the power of 12 shades of gray. So the display monitors will typically display 256 to 1024 shades of gray, and the human eye is capable of distinguishing just about 32 gray levels. So it's thus six to eight bits images only for you to actually sufficient enough for you to see the CT image. So the software, software applications that are able to display CT images, they allow the viewer to narrow the range of gray levels displayed. And this processing task is known as windowing. So the viewer can actually manipulate between the bone window and the soft tissue window by changing the contrast and the brightness of the image displayed to visualize structures better. Also, the interface when you open the um, CT data, even if you're looking at a multi-detector CT or a CBCT, has a display image which is called as multiplanar reformation. It is a reconstructed volumetric data and that can be viewed as images in the axial coronal and sagittal planes. 
So basically it's the x-axis, y-axis and the z-axis or actually in any arbitrary plane depending on what you want to see or what the diagnostic task is demanding. So this ability to view it in multiple planes at the same time uh, or simultaneous visualization is called as multiplanar reformation and often gives the person who's trying to view a three-dimensional image of what you're trying to look at and hence it improves diagnosis considerably. So now this brings us to one of the most important parts in this lecture is the indications for maxillofacial CT scan or multi-detector CTs. Number one is infections including osteomyelitis and space infections, mid-facial and mandibular trauma, developmental anomalies of craniofacial skeleton, benign osseous cysts and neoplasms of the jaws, benign and malignant neoplasms that originate in or extend into the orofacial soft tissues and soft tissue cysts. Now again when we were discussing CBCT you will be uh, understanding that CBCT also lets you um, visualize all of these areas but definitely a computed tomography the difference between the two is something which we will try and understand. So if you were to compare uh, a CT scan to a CBCT scan or let's be very specific a multi-detector CT scan to a cone beam CT scan you must understand that the soft tissue contrast and resolution are excellent on a multi-detector CT scan whereas cone beam is not very uh, good contrast resolution that's the reason why in the maxillofacial region because we don't need to view too many soft tissues a CT CBCT scan serves as a really good imaging tool when you're talking about typical spatial resolution and detective it we're talking about 0.5 mm and above whereas a cone beam CT has a smaller um, <clears throat> width of just 0.08 to 0.4 mm also if you were to compare the most important aspect there is a radiation dose uh, without contrast in the maxillofacial region, you're talking about a standard protocol or a low dose protocol within the range of uh, 0.65 millisieverts to 0.18 millisieverts per scan. Whereas when you're doing a cone beam CT is a lot lesser, is just about 0.1 millisiever. So there lies the difference between a multi-detector CT scan and a CBCT scan. So in my opinion, this is a very important aspect that you need to understand when you are choosing the imaging um, diagnostic imaging for your patient so for most intraosseous pathologies in the bone it must be understood that cbcts will be are adequate when you're talking about maxillofacial region however a multi-detector ct has a higher contrast resolution and provides excellent visualization of soft tissue thus uh, when it there is evidence of suspected soft tissue involvement MDCT is the preferred CT protocol. So this sums up most of what I was trying to tell you as to the application of multi-detector CT versus cone beam CT. So that brings me to the end of this chapter. It is a quite complex image method for or imaging for you as a student to understand and it requires a depth of knowledge of anatomy of the uh, maxillofacial region but nevertheless it's a very interesting field and uh, diagnostic imaging uh, has <coughs> uh, is like a vast ocean and there is lots to learn so like godfrey hounsfield said i would like to leave you with his quote saying don't worry too much if you don't pass your exams so long as you feel you have understood the subject. It's amazing what you can get by the ability to reason things out by conventional methods. Getting down to the basics of what is happening. So that's the end of this talk. Please feel free to contact me if you do have any doubts.